what are the three things that happen during every single real estate deal? These, are, these things happen in every single deal when you are putting in an offer, regardless of what country you're in, whatever. This is what happens. What's going on guys, Jeff Weibo here. I'm back on the channel. I'm a real estate agent in town, real estate investor. Just wanted to give you guys some of my tips and some of the stuff that I've been seeing going on out there in the field. Uh, so these, are, these things happen in every single deal when you are putting in an offer, regardless of what country you're in, whatever. This is what happens. There's only three things that can happen. Can you take a guess? All right, well, let's go, to, go over it. There's three things. It's one, your offer is accepted. Two, your offer is countered. Or three, they do nothing. And the reason why I wanted to cover it, it's very interesting that if you start thinking of it this way, you really start tailoring how you're gonna write your offer. So as an agent, I'm gonna coach my clients on how they're going, how I want them to offer based on this, this facts. And as a buyer, you wanna also have this in mind. All right, so because a lot of you guys out there, if, if the property is uh, $300,000, you wanna come in, you want it, let's say you want it for 290, all right? That's kind of what you're thinking as a buyer. Now as agents, we're gonna know what's going on in the market out there and potentially the $300,000 property should be sold for 310 or maybe it should be sold for 300 or maybe it should be the 290. But you wanna get a deal right now because you wanna be able to brag to your friends that you, you scored a good deal because you're thinking this magical number that the realtor picked, you just need to get it by $10,000 lower than this magical number that the realtor picked. You don't know if that realtor priced the home properly. You don't know if he underpriced it. You don't know if he overpriced it. This is the kind of stuff you wanna go through with your real estate agent. And agents, we need to be coaching uh, our buyers like this the same way. So if it's 300,000 and they wanna get it for 290, uh, a lot of you guys, some of you guys will be like, all right, well, I want it for 290. So if I do 275, 280, the first thing that they will do is counter me down to uh, 290, and then I can maybe get it for like 280, 285, 288, something like that. Well, remember, there's three things that can happen on every single deal. One is that they accept your 275, or two, they counter it, or three, they do nothing. So, if you start too low with no story, and I'll tell you what I mean by story, they can do the thing called nothing, and then you're in a horrible position, because now you are countering yourself if you really need this property, and you came in at 275, and they did nothing, and then you start creeping up to 280, and then they do nothing, and then you say, okay, one more offer, and then 285, and they do nothing. They're just letting you counter yourself if the agent on the other side was good. So as the agent, we have to be careful with not coming in with a low ball, because the low ball, you guys think it's gonna get a counter? It won't a lot of the times. Now, if you guys do do a low ball, a, a, an agent like myself will try to get the other agent to give me a counter, but if he or she is smart, they might make me learn my lesson with my client and just not even counter me at all. So it's, so it's very, uh, you have to really pay attention to like where you start and because you think you kind of want to finish in an area. But where I said you need a story, if you are like, uh, dear Mr. Seller or your agent, me is telling uh, the, the seller that we're offering you 275 because the house next door to you sold for uh, 280 and they have a better roof. Well, that's a story. And then it's no longer a low ball that's just getting hit, hitting them in the face. Because you guys gotta always, I teach this, teach this constantly, put yourself in the shoes of the seller. And if he had his house listed for 300 and you come in at 275 with no story, is that a kick in the face for him? Do you think he's going to run over to his pen these, okay, I guess I do own a pen, but it's all DocuSign now. And is he gonna actually counter you and say, thank you for that low ball offer. I'm gonna counter you at 290, 295, and let's just meet in the middle and like, let's call it a day. No, he's gonna be like, tell this guy to come back when he's serious, is what they're, uh, they would say, and a good agent would fight back. Now, you gotta really, yeah, pay attention to this. If you did have that story, the cover letter, whatever, the verbal cover letter, you could, 
say, your, your neighbor sold for this, this is why I'm offering you this, and then that might get his head uh, scratching a bit, and he's gonna be like, all right, okay, well, I didn't, I, maybe he didn't know this, maybe his agent didn't tell him, and maybe he didn't want to know this. He knew it, but he didn't want anyone else to know it, because he's just like, well, let's see if we can get 300, because like, I'll probably get a 290 or 295. So now you're coming in super low trying to do that. Okay, so for that scenario, let's say the property was worth the $300,000, and you want to do a first offer, and there's no other action on the property, it's kind of a dead market. You're gonna to want to offer somewhere around you know, potentially the 280s high, maybe even the 290 right at it. And, but again, maybe come with a story and say why you're doing this. Uh, and then potentially they could do right then and there. They could accept. If you come in at 280s, 282s, because you're thinking you're gonna meet in the middle, they might just counter down to 295 and then you're gonna go to 285. 287 and you're gonna try it and you're gonna be fighting over a thousand dollars at the at the 292 mark or something like that and then you didn't get your property for 290 exactly so uh, it's very important that you speak with your realtor and figure out what's the best strategy in every single property every single listing it has a story it goes beyond the number that goes beyond trying to get it for 290 you can get it for 290 you gotta know the story maybe they need to move, they like need to move. They've already sold, they've already uh, bought another house and they need to get this house sold. This, sometimes the selling agent lets this slip or lets you know about it and you can really attack it in your offer as an agent, as the, the buyer agent, or even if you're just a buyer, investor out there. Uh, you really wanna go after these strategies. So it could be that, it can be a closing date is super important. So you could say, okay, I'll, come up to the 290 if you can close on this date and it might be the vice versa again maybe the seller comes down to 293 or something like that but then they want October the 5th maybe you don't even care you don't even care about October 5th but you're going to use it as an advantage and you say listen we can do October 5th but it's got to be for 290 because it's putting my clients in a bad position right now that might not even be necessarily true, but you're gonna use other things beyond the dollar value, dates and other parts of conditions uh, to make it happen. Like, listen, we can we can do it, but we're gonna need the jungle gym in the backyard, or we're gonna need you to remove all the garbage in the basement, but we'll, we'll make it happen for this. And, and then you gotta use these things as strategies to, uh, to make money for your clients. And as an investor, you wanna be at least telling your realtor to be like, do this for me, right? So um, send me a DM uh, if you need it. <laughs> Anyways, so for the buyers out there, let me know in the comment section, what are some unique strategies you've used to get your offers accepted? Because uh, remember, the three things that can happen are your offer can be accepted, it can be countered, or they can just uh, do nothing. And do nothing is the worst because then you have to counter yourself 10 times until they actually start putting their pen to paper. So. One of the things we do also on that is to, if they did nothing, we and we thought our offer was good, we'll say, well, we'll see you in a month and when you're still on the market or something like that. And then a lot of times you get the, uh, hey Jeff, like uh, we just lowered the price of it. Is your guy still interested? And then we can re-give him uh, the low ball that was actually uh, legit because we explained why we offered low. So little options for you guys, trying to make you guys some money in real estate. Hit me up in the DMs. I'm always over on Instagram daily, daily posting stories and everything. I have a course that you'd be in the description if you ever wanted to get on it. And I'm just here for you guys. So hit me up in the comment section and, and let me know uh, what else has been going on in the world of real estate. Uh, also coming up this fall, we have Las Vegas Mastermind. Me and Matt McKeever are hosting that. Hope to see you guys out there. It's gonna be a lot of people that are like-minded in one space getting together and we're gonna just conquer conquer the world from the uh, the hotel that Matt McKeever and I bought. Bought out for two days. We didn't buy it for the hotel, but we bought it for two days. Renting it, I guess. Renting the entire hotel for you guys. All right, so looking forward to seeing you guys there. Again, if you're new, smash that subscribe button and hit the like button and uh, we will catch you guys in the next video.